What's up everybody, this is Balfia Jam97 here giving you my thoughts and review of E3 2017 as a whole. And I'll be quite frank and be honest with myself, the majority of E3 2017 was pretty dull and boring. You know, there wasn't any genuine uh, funny moments, no genuine like uh, technical hiccups, etc. You know, the general shit that most people in this day and age would actually go to watch these conferences, you know. Or at least that's just me, you know, just to see what kind of fuck-ups could happen on stage or maybe some kind of genuine uh, shit that they made uh, for a video, like, say, Nintendo's uh, Spotlight videos that they do. But, yeah, for the most part, it was pretty dull, but this wouldn't be a E3 review unless I actually talk about, like, each of the conferences, uh, put my ratings on each one of them, and basically say my top five games that I'm most anticipated for. Uh, 2017, 2018, and beyond. So, I'm going to go in chronological order and say uh, EA's conference, which of course I got everything from all the conferences in one uh, no. And of course, EA's conference wasn't nearly as boring as it was like last year, but it was still pretty boring, at least up until like the end where they show 30 minutes of straight gameplay of Star Wars Battlefront 2, which of course looks pretty good and much better improved than how it was with the original Battlefront because that shit was just a beta so they could release that at least um, on time before or at least after uh, the Force Awakens movie which I don't remember exactly what release date it was but it was during around that time so they just capitalized on like the Star Wars craze coming back you know so anyhow Star Wars Battlefront 2 looks pretty good at least they're genuine enough from actually fixing the the problems that people have with the original and at least this time, you're not buying any season passes, you're not buying any DLCs, well, at least for what we hear about now. <clears throat> but, uh, they're doing this kind of microtransactions thing, which of course, I wouldn't have much of an issue if, say, it's just cosmetic items, or let's just say cosmetic characters, like maybe uh, Qui-Gon Jinn locked into a fucking loot box system, <laughs> or whatever. But, if it's like weapons, lightsabers, or like overpowered shit, locked into money then we can have an issue with it but as of right now it's just microtransactions we just have to wait and see if there is going to be an issue with star wars battlefront 2 uh there was some other shit like a new need for speed game uh new sports games which to be quite frank i only played a little bit of the need for speed games but they're not generally my most favorite racing games that much and that one looks too cinematic for my taste for a card game i'm just saying that much uh, what was a DLC for Battlefield 1? Definitely would get me to at least buy the Season Pass or so. Which is pretty funny because, of course, DICE was like, Hey guys, we're not going to do Season Passes anymore uh, for our new game. But this old game that we released like last year, yeah, we're still doing those Season Passes, you know? Because why not? But yeah, it looks pretty cool and it definitely would get me back into playing Battlefield 1. Because I still have the thing on my shelf and all these other games uh, are taking my time away for it, you know? Of course, uh, they showcase a way out, uh, basically from the same designer who did Brothers, a pretty good co-op game that is enjoyed much better if you had somebody with you, like what is it, local co-op and online, and it's the same principle for a ways out. Uh, basically, you and a partner, either offline or on the couch, basically are trying to escape this prison. You're having like these sequence of stories uh, from one side to the other, and it's pretty interesting how it's, it's split screen from beginning to end which could have mar marginal issues if, say, they don't iron the game out, but I don't know, maybe maybe they'll iron it out like later down the road, because I'm genuinely interested with a way out when it comes out on PS4, uh, Xbox One, and PC. And then, of course, they show a teaser trailer for Bioware's new game, Anthem, which, of course, the following day, Microsoft had uh, full-on gameplay uh, footage of it. Well, gameplay footage, because I'm still... I'm not entirely sure if it's bullshot or not. But anyhow, EA's conference wasn't as boring as last year's, but it was still it was just it was still sleep material, you know. And then following EA's conference was Microsoft's conference. And Microsoft's conference has plenty of games that I at least want to talk about, even though I don't really have any means of playing them aside from maybe like one game or multiplats that I can get on PS4. But I still want to at least talk about it because it is the state of the industry and I like video games as a whole. And of course the reveal of Project Scorpio being another Xbox One model. Which is funny because last year they revealed another Xbox One model, which was the Xbox One S. Basically a slimmer version of Xbox One, being able to play Ultra 4K HD, uh, Blu-rays, uh, 4K content through Netflix, 
and a bit smaller and not much of a brick compared to the original uh, DVR, VCR, Xbox One model. Uh, and Xbox One X is much slimmer than Xbox One S. It has like, what, 9 teraflops from what I remember in the hard drive. Basically more than what PS4 has, so developers could make games with faster loading times or even none whatsoever, etc. But I'm not really trusting that whole bullshit with the two, the true 4K, right? The true Ultra HD 4K experience. Because then, you know, some of the games that they showcased or the games that were shown on Xbox One X hardware uh, weren't in 4K. You know, that, that's something. Uh, but anyhow, they were showcasing Forza Motorsport 7 for uh, Windows 10 PC and the Xbox One systems. And, you know, generally I don't really care that much for sports and I normally wouldn't talk about it. But I'm talk, talking about this one here because when they were showing that fucking thing, they were showing a fucking car like the Porsche 911, uh, whatever model it was. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Is this a gaming conference or a fucking car show for Honda? You know, like some kind of shit. And of course, you know, when he said, this is the most powerful 9-11, everybody on fucking Twitter was like, no! <laughs> you know? I'm generally surprised nobody from 4chan's uh, feet board uh, photoshopped that ultra uh, Porsche 9-11 into the fucking Twin Towers. I'm surprised I haven't seen that yet, knowing how fucking edgy uh, 4chan would be. But yeah, you know, it looks pretty good. At least for a racing game, it could be in 4K, and <laughs> for funny enough... Uh, the gigabytes for Forza Motorsport 7 is 100 gigabytes. 100 gigabytes. This is why they're selling the fucking 1 terabyte hard drives now, because that's just too fucking much for a racing game, so, nah. I wonder how that shit is on fucking PC. But anyhow, then they showed uh, Metro Exodus, which looks pretty good. I played some of the Metro games um, on 360, PC, and on PS4. And definitely at least keep my eyes on Exodus, but one of the things I wanted to talk about with Exodus, guys, it kind of looks kind of scripted, doesn't really look like a true gameplay footage, and then of course, after that conference was over, the developers revealed that it wasn't actually running on actual Xbox One X hardware, but PC specs that were close to the Xbox One X's hardware. Which, of course, I knew that was a fucking bullshit from the beginning, but, you know, whatever. At least I know that game is going to look exactly how good it is on Xbox One X from how that uh, revelation came to be. And then, of course, they showcase Minecraft in 4K! And it looks alright. You know, to be quite frank. But at least with Minecraft's uh, cross platform play that Mojang wants, not only do you get to play with players on multiple mobile phones, uh, multiple Xbox One systems, on PC, through like the. The Minecraft, uh, official Minecraft, not the Java version that was released originally. But you can also play with Minecraft players who bought the Nintendo Switch version, which is pretty fucking cool. Not only does it increase the install base of the game itself, but it actually brings a lot more value to which version it is. And you don't have to, like, buy another fucking system and then buy another copy of another version of the game to be able to play with your friends just because of the limitations of hardware. So that's pretty fucking cool. You know, and I can give Mojang and Microsoft credit for not being that stingy uh, with the cross-platform play. Sony, on the other hand, they can suck a bag of dicks for that shit, but I, <laughs> that's going a bit ahead of myself, because we're still doing the Microsoft conference. And then, of course, they showed the world premiere trailer for Assassin's Creed Origins, which looks pretty good. It still looks like Assassin's Creed, but at least it looks a bit more polished than the last Assassin's Creed game that released in, what, uh, 2015 or so? And definitely, I like how there's no Assassin's Vision where you can see through, like, uh, the infrastructures of buildings. You have to literally use, like, your own, like, the camera, for instance, and even your own eagle, which I think is pretty fucking cool. And even though this technically doesn't really feel like a fantasy, like an historical fantasy kind, a historical history kind of game, and it looks more into the realm of fantasy, at least this one looks to be pretty fun, you know? Definitely a bit more open out of it, even though, uh... Typical Ubisoft fashion, multiple fucking editions for games that aren't even released yet. With Assassin's Creed, um, the biggest bundle for that game, I shit you not, 800 and fucking dollars for Assassin's Creed Origins for like some ultimate collector's uber duper edition. And I'm like, niggas, you need to fucking calm down, <laughs> you know? But, but still, you know, Assassin's Creed looks pretty good. Uh, so was State of the Decline 2. 
uh, what else was there show? I was a bit surprised that they were showing off like Bandai Namco games like Dragon Ball Fighter C, looking absolutely beautiful. Arc System Works does a fantastic job in terms of the graphics, the art style, and definitely looks like a Dragon Ball game through and through. And looks like an actual competent fighter, so that's a bonus, you know, an absolute bonus. Compared to Xenoverse, where it was like kind of clunky and stuff like that, here it actually looks like a, a competent fighting game. So that's really fucking cool to see. And what else? Then they show Code uh, Code Veen or Code Vein, basically like a vampire esque Dark Souls game. But you know, kind of looks pretty cool. Getting, definitely gonna keep my eyes on that when it releases on PS4, you know. Then they show The Last Night, looking exceptionally good. Uh, sea of Thieves. Uh, definitely, if I had an Xbox One X or a Windows 10 PC, I'd definitely be hype as hell for it because it looks like an MMO, a pirates game that I definitely would like to be able to try. MMO esque, not MMO like, you know, in that kind of sense. Uh, what was that? Then Super Lucky's Tale, which I didn't expect a game like it to actually be shown in a Microsoft conference. And what else was there shown? Oh, yeah, like Cuphead, for instance. Definitely looks great. An actual release day coming this fall, uh, 2017, and not only for Windows 10 and the Xbox One platforms, but it's actually coming on Steam and it can be played on Windows 7 operating systems, so that's really fucking cool. Hopefully the computer that is in my brother's room can actually play Cuphead, because I really want to fucking play Cuphead, you know? What else? Then they show off Crackdown 3 looking exceptionally good, despite, you know, the, the comments from the developers saying that excuse me there, uh, from the developers being like 30 FPS, and even though it's like running on Xbox One X hardware, it's not true 4K, um, Crackdown 3 looks pretty fucking cool, especially playing with yourself and playing with your friends, if I had a system like Xbox One or if Windows 10, I'd definitely be picking that up, you know, and then Middle Earth Shadow of War looks pretty cool, definitely would like to have my interest of playing that on PS4. And then, of course, the big reveal towards the end of the conference uh, was backwards compatibility for original Xbox titles, the OG Xbox One on Xbox One systems, you know? So that's really, really cool. For instance, that one of the games that they showcased, not that showcased, that they announced to be one of the first backwards compatible titles for Xbox One systems is, of course, Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge, a very, very underrated Xbox title, which I definitely, definitely love how Microsoft showcased this instead of just saying, like, hey, you can play the original Halo or Halo 2 on Xbox, on Xbox One, even though you have, like, the Master Chief Collection. So I definitely think it was really cool that they showcased this. And what's really fucking cool about the Xbox One uh, backwards compatibility is that not only for digital games that they release for like the store, for instance, but even the discs themselves will work on an Xbox One system. So technically, you can just go to a mom and pop store or buy something off of eBay. Shit, I'm trying to get out of the fucking case. Put an OG Xbox disc into the Xbox One platform, and it will look really fucking cool. You know, that, 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 that's really something, you know? Because, you know, they definitely don't have much of the exclusives for Xbox One, but still, I give them credit where credit is due. And also, uh, Phil Spencer, uh, later out, later finishing the conference, saying that, oh, um, we want to have backwards compatibility for original Xbox titles to be played on Windows 10 PCs to even the Xbox Game Pass, which basically be the Netflix equivalent of of Sony's PlayStation Now service, where you could, like, rent out or even buy digital games on your Xbox One platforms, at least he wants that on Windows 10 PCs, but overall, Microsoft's conference, it was, it was like a 7 out of 10, or a 7.5 out of 10, they did announce games, which I definitely do accommodate them for, aside from, you know, the, the Porsche 911 car that they show for Forza Motorsport 7, and, you know, some kind of bullshit lies, uh, for the 4K, but overall, they showed some of the games, and at least I want to see what they're going to do for backwards compatible original Xbox titles on Xbox One and in the future for Windows 10 PCs. And then following that was Bethesda's conference, which was... Okay, Bethesda's conference in a nutshell was like, here's a bunch of old shit that you probably don't give a shit about, and here's the Evil Within 2. That's basically it in a nutshell. They showed VR, uh, or announced VR versions of Fallout 4, uh, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, Skyrim on the Switch, uh, I think maybe T Skyrim VR on PlayStation, which of course was confirmed in Sony's conference, but I'm getting ahead of myself, 
and then some other VR shit that I don't really care about. Bethesda's thing could arguably be the worst conference of E3 2017 because of not much new announcements, you know? Then following that was Digital Devolver Self Conference, which I be quite honest, I don't even remember the games that they announced for it. I just remember how much of a clusterfuck uh, that show was, which admittedly, I didn't even see the conference um, after Bethesda because I just passed out. But at least yesterday, I saw the conference and it, it was like a knockoff Tim and, uh, Tim and Andre show, which I, I actually do appreciate because that was the one bit of humor that I actually liked the most compared to the other shit that was in the other conferences. Because following that is Ubisoft's conference, which during their Just Dance uh, 2018 presentation, they had a panda with some other dancers do the dab. And it wasn't even like a funny thing, it was probably like the dancer going, yeah, let's do this shit, we're making this a meme. Damn, motherfucker, we got that shit. But yeah, uh, Ubisoft's conference was actually much better than how they normally would do their conferences. At least there was a new host, uh, they actually were showcasing more games that they normally would have done in their other conferences, and at least the credibility of the conference at least went up when Miyamoto came on stage with the CEO of Ubisoft to at least show, or at least officially announce, Mario Plus Rabbit's uh, Kingdom Battle, which I didn't expect it to be an XCOM-like game. Normally, I thought it would be, like, say, a third-person shooter with, you know, the leak art of Mario holding a fucking uh, bullet bill gun that looks like something from Mega Man, you know? But still, it looks pretty alright. Probably a bit like an easier version of XCOM with some bits of elements of Akira Chronicles. But yeah, I'm definitely going to keep my eye on Mario Plus Rabbits. But I don't know if I'm really going to pay full price for it unless I really feel... I'm really feeling the need of actually wanting that on my Switch collection. <laughs> Anyhow, then they showed up a bunch of shit that I didn't really care about. Uh, or at least I want to know more about from one of them. Uh, the Crew 2, didn't really expect... A sequel of the crew to actually be announced. Uh, what was it? Then Transfisters or Transferners uh, VR with Elijah Wood. Don't know much about it. They didn't show any gameplay of it, so whatever. And then, of course, uh, a new game from one of the divisions of Ubisoft Montreal, and that was Skull and Bones, a Pirates game, which probably took uh, the mechanics of the Pirates uh, from Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and made it entirely its own game, which they should have just done in the first place. It took them this long to actually make a Pirates-only game with the mechanics that were pr first present in Assassin's Creed 3, then they expanded upon it in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and now they actually made a full game about it. So I'm definitely excited for that. And at least it will replace uh, Sea of Thieves, because, you know, don't have an Xbox One or a Windows 10 PC, so at least I got Skull and Bones to have my Pirates fix. Arr, you know, that kind of shit. Then, of course, Starlink, which the one thing I even remember was them saying some, remember the 80s? Remember the 80s? And then, you know, then then when I saw the fucking figurines on the DualShock 4 controller, I was like, nah. Wait. Nah, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I'm not having some kind of shit on top of the DualShock 4 controller. So you, you, no, not with, not with Starlink. <laughs> And then, of course, they showed off more footage of Far Cry 5. Looks pretty good. And that, along with Assassin's Creed Origins, confirmed that there's no mini-map. It's just exactly good, because that's what the majority of open-world Ubisoft games are. J just look at the map for the majority of your play session, you know? So that's pretty cool that you're actually going to look at the game more than the actual mini-map. And then, of course, uh, Just Dance 2018. The only reason I even mentioned that was because of the panda dabbing. And also coming on any other platforms, but I want to uh, talk most about the Nintendo side. Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Wii U, and the original Wii. I'm like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> We're in 2017. We're in the current year. And these niggas are releasing Just Dance on the Wii. Boy, is the Wii just gonna be like a Just Dance machine? Like the, I mean, technically the production of that system kind of ended with Nintendo and their hard and their like warehouse in Japan, but still, like Just Dance, <laughs> what do you on the Wii? Man, that's like some kind of fooey shit there. But I just wanted to comment on that because I found that pretty funny. And then of course, towards the end of their conference, they showed up. Uh, a pretty big bang, and that was, of course, the confirmation that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is actually coming, and Michael Enkel, a very, very good designer from Ubisoft, the creator of Rayman himself, 
and you know beyond the, the original beyond good and evil announced that yes it's finally going to happen even though it's technically not a sequel to beyond good and evil and more of a prequel to the original beyond good and evil game I just want some more in this universe, and that's really something. Hopefully, that game's actually made a release before uh, Vivendi actually buys Ubisoft by the end of this year. I really hope so, because I don't want Vivendi to cancel Beyond Good and Evil 2, because fuck the executives there. But anyhow, that was it from Ubisoft Conference. It was actually pretty good. I definitely liked some of the announcements more there, mainly because they could just play them on PS4 than they were on EA's conference and even Microsoft's. But then following that was Sony's conference, which I think was the most disappointing one, because typically Sony's conferences in E3, they have a lot more flair to it, and basically they show a lot more games, at least for the future of the PlayStation 4 platform. And of course, they showed off a trailer for Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which at this point is, is Tomb Raider, you know? Uh, both female characters, uh, Chloe from Uncharted 2, and I forgot the other chick's name that she appears in Uncharted 4, Nadine or whatever. I think that's her name. Uh, both of them are like main characters in this side story before Uncharted 4 comes about, I guess. But still, I have that pre-order on Amazon because not only do I get that game, but I also get the uh, remastered PS4 version of Jack and Daxter, like a code for it, in the box. So that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, what is it? Showed off more footage of God of War, which at this point... I'm still a little bit hesitant out of it because really it's not exactly a God of War game. Kratos isn't angry, Kratos doesn't even sound like how he is like in his old self because you know they changed the voice actor and you know it's not even Greek mythology anymore it's like Norse mythology. Honestly if it was a new character set in somewhat of the same world as God of War I wouldn't have much of an issue and it would have at least made like a, a how do I put it a God of War cinematic universe or whatnot. But who, who knows, they just probably slapped in Kratos and the God of War name just so they can make more money in sales. And that's basically what happens, money people are like, yeah, God of War is back! You know, some kind of show. But still, I'm a bit hesitant of that God of War game, but at least I want to be able to try it out, like maybe a rental or maybe a demo station or two. Then of course, the announced DLC or an add-on for Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wilds, looks pretty good. Definitely don't have Horizon Zero Dawn yet, but definitely I will get it sometime this year. Uh, what was it? Days Gone? Diet Coke equivalent of The Last of Us? Put me to sleep. Literally put me to sleep, I'm being quite frank there. And then of course they had the, they had the big bang of the show. Monster Hunter finally coming to a PlayStation platform and that's Monster Hunter World. Not only for PS4, but Xbox One and PC sometime after the PS4 and the Xbox One release of the game. And it looks pretty good. At least now, uh, Capcom is now reusing PlayStation 2 assets for the games that they've been re releasing on Nintendo platforms, like on the 3DS and even on the Switch with Monster Hunter XX, for instance. But I don't know, I'm a bit like kind of uneven with that game as well because not only did they confirm that it's 30 FPS on consoles, PC probably be 60 FPS or so. But also they're dumbing down the mechanics for newcomers as well. And I would have been alright if it was a spin-off or two, but they actually did state that this is a next-gen mainline Monster Hunter game. And it's funny because there hasn't been an announcement for that game to be in Japan, even though it's another mainline Monster Hunter game. I don't know, it just seems a bit weird. But it definitely looks pretty good. I'm still getting my I'm having my eyes closed on that game, for instance, when it comes out. Then of course uh, they showed a trailer for the remake of Shadow of the Colossus. Pretty unnecessary, but pretty ballsy because I didn't really honestly expect to actually have a remake of uh, Shadow of the Colossus. But, you know, whatever. Hopefully there is a bit more content added into the game, like the cut content that they had to do when it, was, when, when it released on PlayStation 2, for instance. So yeah, probably like maybe uh, late 2018 or 2019 for that remake. And then, what was it, they showed off a trailer for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and then they announced a story demo on the same day, and, yeah, I'm not really impressed with that game. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Fighter C looks like a better Marvel vs. Capcom game than the new one that is coming out. So I gotta say, when's Dragon Ball? When's Dragon Ball? You know, that kind of shit. And then following that, a trailer for God, uh, Call of Duty World War II and Destiny 2, which I'm kind of surprised they didn't put like maybe 5 or 10 minutes of talking about like exclusive uh, content coming first to the PlayStation platforms. Thank fucking God that wasn't the case. And what was it? A bunch of VR shit that I couldn't really give a shit about, like Skyrim VR for PS4, 
uh, fucking Sega Bass Fishing Mode for Final Fantasy 15, which I'm like, niggas, what happened to that Prompto VR mode, which I can use the gun? I don't know, that's, that was fun, some bullshit from Square. And then, like, a two-minute long trailer of Detroit Become Human. Looks pretty good, like any other David Cage game, but probably I have to wait and see if the storyline is actually really good, or it's not full of plot holes or boring as, say, Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls, for instance. So that's something. And then finally, towards the end of that uh, conference, was showcasing an extended gameplay footage of Insomniac Games' Spider-Man. Which, of course, I'm a bit hesitant with that because most of the gameplay that was shown in that was QTEs. I do hope that at least the majority of the story mode of Spider-Man isn't riddling QTEs, even more than, say, the Arkham games had. But definitely, it looks pretty good. I definitely like Yuri uh, Lauren Hall, or whatever his last name is, as the voice of Peter Parker and Spider-Man, more than, say, uh, Sam Regal did for Peter and Spider-Man in the Amazing Spider-Man games from Activision. So that's something. But yeah, overall, Sony's conference was a bit of a disappointment, more than any of the other conferences this year. Because normally, Sony's conferences are the ones that most people want to see, you know? And it was a lot shorter, because normally Sony conferences are like maybe two and a half hours long. Basically the equivalent of like a modern day superhero comic book film. But, yeah, it was pretty short. You know, I didn't expect it to be like that. But, you know, I was severely pissed off when they didn't show Knack 2. Knack 2 was like on the, the show floor, and even like some footage of Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, and even the mech game that Atlas is doing for PS4. <clears throat> Generally surprised about that. But anyhow, uh, Sony's conference was a bit of a disappointment. I still say maybe a 7.7 .7 or 7.8 out of 10. I couldn't really say like an 8. But yeah, that was it for all the conferences for E3. And then it came Nintendo's uh, short 25 minute long uh, Nintendo Spotlight E3 2017 video where they were showcasing. Most, most of the games that were already announced, but definitely confirmation out of the release date. For example, Xenoblade 2 being Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and actually is coming this fall 2017 for the Nintendo Switch. Looks absolutely freaking beautiful. I can't wait to get that on the Switch. And I know for a fact probably it's not going to follow uh, the original Xenoblade Chronicles, which I'll admit, I haven't really played the game, aside from maybe a um, new Nintendo 3DS demo, when that game released on in the Nintendo New York store, for instance. Uh, then they showcase, uh, well, they announce Kirby and Yoshi having their own standalone game on the Switch, because the last time we had a mainline Kirby game on a home console was Kirby Return to Dream Land for the Wii, and that was one of the best co-op games on the Wii, definitely, I think, much better than New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you know, in my opinion. And then Yoshi, at least not looking like Yoshi's Wally World, or Wooly World, as I like to say, Wally World. Definitely looks really cool. And then, of course, confirmation that, yes, Game Freak is making a mainline, the next generation, like a next mainline Pokemon game for the Switch. Because when they had that uh, Pokemon Direct, which I didn't do because I didn't really want to have, I didn't have much to talk about uh, for that Direct. Uh, the only thing that was announced for the Switch was a port of Pokemon Tournament Fighter. But at least now, in 2018 and beyond, the next Pokemon game, probably next year, because, you know, ever since uh, the DS games, there have been a lot of Pokemon games every single year. So probably next year, uh, the, new, the new mainline Pokemon game for the Switch coming out. And then, of course, the big, big bomb of, the, of E3, Metroid Prime 4 officially, officially announced for the Nintendo Switch. Yo, I lost my collective shit, and I was screaming like, YO! Holy shit! Because Met the Metroid Prime games are really fucking good games. And while uh, Metroid Prime 4 isn't being developed by Retro Studios, Retro is probably working on the next Donkey Kong game or some new IP for the Switch, at least uh, Nintendo's Kyoto team, they have a good track record in their games, and the executive producer on all the Metroid Prime games is still... Uh, working on Metro Prime 4, so I'm not entirely worried about it, but at least it's been confirmed that Samus is back, baby. Samus is back, which is kind of funny because after the Nintendo Spotlight, they then announced that, oh yeah, we got another Metro game, and I was like, what? Nigga, what? 
<laughs> and of course, it's a remake of Metroid Prime, not Metroid Prime, of uh, Metroid 2 on the Game Boy. That is Metroid uh, Samus Returns on the Nintendo 3DS. Looks exceptionally good, and while it's being made by Mercury uh, Steam, or Stream, whatever their fucking name is, and they were working on that pretty bad uh, Castlevania game on the 3DS, at least. Uh, uh, but what was his name? The producer, uh, Kenji Yamamoto, uh, the creator of Metroid, supervising that title. So at least he had that nice flair to it. And Kenji Yamamoto hasn't to disappoint aside from Metroid Other M. I can tell you that much. But yeah, pretty fucking cool. Metroid is back. Samus is back. We just need F Zero to come back. Probably next E3. <laughs> then of course, Fire Emblem Warriors looks like another Warriors game. You know. Then, of course, they showcased more details for the first DLC of Breath of the Wild, which I'm most excited for because I already got that pre-order to have that Tingle costume all over Hyrule because that shit's going to be fucking fun to play. And, of course, the trials that they were showcased for that and, and the, what was it, the second DLC, um, having the champions, including Zelda, and then Amiibo showcasing for that. You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, Rocket League on the Switch, exclusive content, cross-platform play for not just PC, uh, and even the Xbox platforms and the Switch, so that's really fucking cool. That along with Minecraft on the Switch, being able to cross-platform play with PC and Xbox players, so that's really incentivizing. Congratulations, Nintendo. They're not Puritans when it comes to that, unlike Sony, which is going to eat a fucking bag of dicks for that. Then, of course, a really, really good trailer of Super Mario Odyssey showing a bit more of Mario's new companion, uh, Cappy, uh, being able to throw Cappy across the across the environment and being able to take control of basically almost anything in your way take control of a taxi car take control of a frog take control of a goomba take control of an actual human being <laughs> but also taking control of a fucking t-rex a t-rex is in a mario game a mainline mario game not a spin-off a mainline mario game and proportional human beings and paulina that, that's something it looks exceptionally good, and I had the chance of playing that along with some of the other games that they announced uh, for the Nintendo Spotlight E3 uh, video. So that'll be the next video to come after this one, because Nintendo Spotlight definitely was pretty good. But I'm going to be jumbling about it because that Mario Odyssey footage, just thinking about it, was pretty fucking cool. But anyhow, uh, Nintendo Spotlight was pretty good, much better than how it was like for the last two Spotlights that they had. And, yeah. It was much better, at least for some of the games that they announced actually coming out this year on like Sony's conference where the majority of the stuff is either 2018 and beyond. But yeah, that was um, everything I, <laughs> that was my thoughts of E3 2017 as a whole. Most of it was pretty dull, but there was some pretty good spotlights in the row. Like for instance, uh, the games that I'm kind of interested in to learn a bit more, uh, A Way Out from EA, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter C. Uh, Code Vein, Cuphead, Evil Within 2, uh, what else, e Beyond Good and Evil 2, uh, Spider-Man, uh, the Uncharted game that I talked about because I got that pre-ordered, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Kirby on the Switch, the next mainline Pokemon game, Metro Prime 4, uh, Breath of the Wild DLC, which I got that pre-ordered, Rocket League on the Switch, and Super Mario Odyssey. Man. That's a bit of a mouthful over there. But yeah, what are your thoughts on E3 2017 uh, in the comments below? Who was the winner? Who was the loser? Have a critique of each of those conferences in the comments below. Like, favorite, subscribe. This is Battlefield Channel 97. Catch you guys later.